Postare la va. Yes. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Requesting everybody to be seated. The people sitting in the back can come in front. Ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome to this general session of the 114th Annual General Meeting of the Goa Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Goa's Chamber's AGM is the most awaited AGM in the business calendar of the state, not only because of Goa Chamber is the oldest and the largest industry associate in the state, but also the Chamber officials along with the guest speakers which always include the Honourable Chief Minister and other important ministers of state indicate in which state uh, the state's economy is going in which direction. Due to COVID-related restrictions for the last two years, we were forced to have our business session behind closed doors. So, we are having this general session after a gap of two years and it gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all. On the days today, we have the Chamber's President, Mr. Ralph D'Souza, Accompanying him are the Chamber's office bearers, the first Vice President, Mr. Srinivas Bab Dempo, Honorary Secretary, Mr. Yatim Kakurkar, Honorary Treasurer, Mr. Chandrakan Gavas, and Mr. Manoj M. Kakulov, our immediate past President. We are extremely grateful for the gracious presence of our Honorable Chief Minister, Dr. Pramod Savan, Industries and Transport Minister, Mr. Marvin Bodino, and Tourism IT Minister, Mr. Rohan Compton. We are also pleased to have Mr. V. Shantakumar, Senior Advisor and CMO of 91 Spring Board, who will deliver the keynote address. So, to formally begin the session, I request our President, Mr. Raj D'Souza, to formally welcome you all. Mr. D'Souza, please. Dr. Pramod Sarma, Honorable Chief Minister of the State of Goa and the Chief Guest for today's function. Our guest of honor, Mr. Mohit Gujini, Honorable Minister for Industries, Trade and Commerce. Our guest of honor, Mr. Rohan Kaunte, Honorable Minister for Tourism and IT. Mr. Vishanta Kumar, Senior Advisor and CMO, 91 Spring Board, and today's keynote speaker and our guest of honor. My office bearers on the days, members of the chamber, respected invitees and guests, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the managing committee of the chamber and on my own behalf, I am extremely happy to welcome you all to this general session of the 114th annual general body meeting of the chamber. It gives me, it gives me immense pleasure and happiness to welcome you all in my capacity as the President of the Go Chamber of Commerce and Industry, I welcome the Chief Guest of today's function, Honorable Chief Minister of the State of Goa, Dr. Pramod Savan. In spite of his busy schedule, he gave us time to grace this function. Thank you very much, sir. I take this opportunity to thank you, Honorable Chief Minister, for responding to industry grievances and congratulate him on his second term as the Chief Minister of the State. I'm sure in the second term, the state government will be more proactive, more, more proactively play the role of a facilitator and enabler of the business sector. I would like to welcome Honorable Minister for Industry, Trade and Commerce, Mr. Mohan Vadim. We on behalf of GCCI congratulate him for making available the draft industrial policies for suggestion of all concerned. We at the Chamber are in a process of studying the draft and we are positive that our suggestions will be considered favorable. I also welcome our young and dynamic Minister for Tourism and IT, Mr. Rohan Kondo, who is present here. He has always given importance to GCCI and we in GCCI and thank you to him. We are fortunate to have with us Mr. Shanta Kumar, Senior Advisor and CMO 91 Springboard as a keynote speaker of today's event. 
eagerly await to hear from him and gain vital knowledge, vast information and valuable inputs from him. Thank you, sir, for accepting our invitation. And I, on the behalf of the Chamber, welcome you. I welcome Advocate General, Chief Secretary, MLA Secretaries of Board Government, Heads of Government Departments, Corporations and Senior Government Officers. I welcome past Presidents of GCCI members of Managing Committee, Chairman, Vice Chairman, Mentors and of 15 very important sector West committees and goals, renowned industrialists as well as members of the state's business community. It is well known that the Chamber has completed 114 years of its existence in service of the business and economy of Goa. We are proud and thankful to the Honourable Minister for recognizing the service of Goa Chamber of Commerce and Industry because on the day of the Goa Statehood Day, we, the Chamber, were selected to receive the very special award from the Government of Goa in appreciation of the services that the Chamber lent to the government and to the business community. Goa's economy as well as the rest of the world weathered perilous times during the COVID-19 infection, leading to business closures, job losses, societal changes and technological challenges. The industry and our people have braved that and GCCI has stood firmly as a voice of the industry in Goa, analyzing its impact on various sectors of the economy and conveying industry insights to the government. The road ahead is rough and steep for the industry and we urge the government to address our concerns. Primarily, ease of doing business is all that the industry asks for. A hassle-free, time-bound system where truly a single window means what it states. We want suitable and sturdy infrastructure linkages connecting our port, rail, terminals and airport. With Mopa Airport as well as the new Zohari Bridge scheduled to be inaugurated shortly, the last mile connectivity should be in place and our focus should be on quality projects. The Goan industry is conscious of its responsibility to the environment and understands the necessity to shift to alternate fuels. Chamber had requested that till such time as the transition takes place to alternate fuels, SMEs and MSMEs be allowed to use at least low, very low sulfur fine furnace oil. This request of the GCCI had been acceded to and an extension was granted till 31st December 21. This was a huge relief to the industry. We have also appealed to the authorities to review the rates of the west, wet or natural gas in Goa which is more, which is four times more than what is charged in Maharashtra and double that what is charged in Gujarat and Haryana. Our long term appeal is to include natural gas under GST. This would have a positive impact on industry and raise the usage of the environmental friendly fuel. I am happy to mention that two representations made to the G by the GCCI to the Honorable Minister of Finance, Ms. Nirmala Sitharaman, have been accepted and their extension of due date of filing forms GSRT9 for the financial year 2021, extension and relaxation of additional fee in filing e-forms for the financial year 2021 under Companies Act 2013. At its peak, in 2010-11, mining contributed to 20% of the state's GDP and almost 60% of the livelihood of Goans directly employed by the industry. Mining continues to be an important sector despite the challenges and despite new developments taking place. GCCI supports the resumption of sustainable mining in the state. We are working on changing the perception of the mining as a more people-friendly industry contrary to the general notion. GCCI is happy that government initiated the process of resuming sustainable mining activity and that too we hope itself early as possible. Tourism, Goa's main revenue generator after mining, was staring at a challenging task of revival. GCCI made a representation to the Honorable Minister of State for Tourism. Mr. Shripad and I giving several suggestions, principal one being implementation of Goa Tourism Board. I am happy to say that a suggestion for the Goa Tourism Board has been accepted and we had the first meeting on 23rd of December 21. 
Some other key GCCI interventions were starting express RT-PCR test facilities where the Goa International Airport to alleviate the difficulties faced by travelers arriving departing from Goa. We also helped in commencing the East European Charter Flights through the Office of the Honorable Minister and save what was remaining of the charter season. In tourism, state, in state like ours, participation and involvement of locals is important. A unique initiative of GCCI Tourism Committee and Goa Heritage Action Group under the aegis of Corporation of City of Panjim was curating the City Walk Festival to encourage locals to reconnect to their history and heritage and to create in them a sense of ownership and pride in the inheritance. This got a tremendous response not only from locals, but was acknowledged as by even neighboring states as an initiative that they would like to replicate. Manufacturing has emerged as one of the high growth sectors in India, giving flip to make it India, India vision of Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi, uh, the GOI production linked incentive schemes across 130 key sectors with an announced outlay of INR 1.97 lakh crores. GCCI has petitioned a petition to the Honorable Chief Minister that ease of doing business was foremost, is foremost and crucial to the industrial revival, performance and progress. The GCCI's Women Wing has launched the startup incubation cell under IDA, India Economic Development Association, a business incubator not only promote entrepreneurship among women, but to guide them through planning, management, training, and securing finance. The women's wing helped us regularly handle queries and issues faced by women entrepreneurs. Nothing is better than collaborative effort. When chambers started rates imposed by the Corporation of the City of Panjim over the years, it found that the rates of sanitation fees were ad hoc and on square feet basis only, and that there was no real correlation between the nature of the establishment and waste segregation, just waste generation. Restaurant traders, automobile dealers, dealers, spas and salons were charged the same rate, irrespective of the waste generated. The retail sector, which significantly contributes to the employment and economy, was on the verge of taking another hit to the CCP proposal went through. The GCCI Retail Committee intervened and CCP accepted GCCI's proposal for amendment in the situation and the sanitation fee structure for the city of Panjim. Chamber also gave a detailed submission to MDG, GIDC, outlining the various remedial measures that needed to be undertaken on a priority basis. If Go had to be indeed become Swam Purna Bhagavayam and a manufacturing hub for exports. Some among these were online procedures to be implemented and, and straightened with e-filing, automated building approvals, NFC certifications, immediate plot allotments after IPB approvals, accountability of service provided by various departments, infrastructural issues at industrial estates, rainwater harvesting, etc. Chamber has proposed to the District Export Promotion Committee that there should be more focus on the potential exports of fisheries, vegetable, electronic manufacturing, shipbuilding, spares, and packaging material. GCCI during the year met the Honorable Governor of Goa, His Excellency Mr. Sridharan Pillai, Honorable Union Minister for Road Transport and Highways, Mr. Nitin Gadkari. Honorable Minister for Finance, Ms. Nirmala Sitaraman. Honorable Minister for Tourism, Mr. G. Krishna Reddy. Honorable Minister for Trade and Commerce, Mr. Piyush Goyal. Honorable Minister for State for Tourism, Ports, Shipping and Waterways, Mr. Shipat Naik. Honorable Chief Minister of Goa, Dr. Pramod Savan. Ministers of Cooperation, Power, Industry, IT, Tourism, the Chief Secretaries, Principal Secretary, and all other Secretaries, Chief Engineers of PWD, WRD, Department of Electricity, MD, GIDC, Chief Commissioner of IT, State GST, Central GST, Regional Director of Reserve Bank of India, Director General of Police, Goa, Collectors, Captain of Ports, Direct, Airport Director, Chairman MPT, Mayor, 
Corporation of City of Panjim, Director of Mines and Geology and Deputy Commissioner of Labor. We had discussions with them at length on matters relating to industry and commerce. I thank them for their courtesy extended by them during our visit. Many of the issues discussed with these authorities are sorted out and I'm sure that the remaining issues are under the active consideration. We at the Chamber will cooperate and follow up these matters with them for early solutions. During the year, the Chamber sadly lost its managing committee member, chairman of the membership committee and our representative in the South Central Konkan and Konkan Railway, Mr. Gangara Maruskar. Always well-dressed and dandy, Mr. Maruskar was a driving force in addressing the membership issue during the pandemic era and also the architect of the new membership drive. We miss his elegant presence and his detailed reports on the outcome of the meetings. May the good Lord grant his soul eternal peace. I have not mentioned every committee, but I would like to express my many thanks to the GCCI committee chairpersons and committee members for investing their time and energy to make our committees actively contribute to GCCI's agendas. I also thank the state and central bureaucrats and the government officials, bank and financial institutions for their support. Many thanks to local associations like CII, Go Council, GSIA, TTAG, GPMA, Credile, VIA, GTA, GBOA, NIPM, and the Go branch of WIRC of Chartered Accountants for teaming up with GCCI as a strong industry force. I'm thankful to National Association like SHM, FIKI, FIO, EEPC for collaborating with GCCI to bring national level events to Goa as well as in supporting in, in elevating Goa's issues at the national level. My gratitude to the local electronic and print media for their support in airing GCCI's views and special thanks to GCCI Managing Committee, its office bearers, its immediate past presidents, all past presidents who inspire me. A special thanks to the Secretariat team led by, by Director General Mr. Sanjay Amonkar. If people of Goa are grateful, the people of Goa are grateful to the Honorable Chief Minister and his cabinet for entrusting the great Goa land scam to the special investigation team. The citizens of Goa anxiously await a positive outcome from this investigation, resulting in the lands illegally grabbed, restored to his rightful owners, and the criminals dealt with stringent punishment. Thank you, sirs, for protecting and safeguarding the assets and livelihoods of Goans. Just as we are breathing a little easy, there is a warning of the fourth wave, which, going by our medical fraternity, should be easy on us. All the same, let us not throw caution to the wind. Breathe easy, my dear members, but let sagacity be your guide. Thank you very much for giving me a patient hearing and a big God bless. Thank you very much for giving me a patient hearing and a big God Thank you, Mr. President. After the formal welcome address, I invite our honorable treasurer, Mr. Chandrakant Gavas, to kindly welcome our guests with class. We are indeed happy to have Mr. V. Shantakuma, Senior Advisor and CMO, 91 Spring Board as our keynote speaker today. But before I invite him to address us, I request our Honorary Secretary, Mr. Yatit Kakurkar, to kindly give a brief introduction of Mr. Shantakuma. Mr. Kakurkar, please. Keynote speaker, 
the multifaceted and marketing genius, Mr. V. Shanta Kumar, Senior Advisor and CM on Anti One Spring Board. Learning is everything. Learning is active. It is what makes knowledge kinetic. It is this philosophy that drives the retired chairman of Saatchi and Saatchi India Advertising Agency to be an active learner. With almost 50 years of experience in sales, marketing, brand communication and consulting, V. Shanta Kumar wants to find new solutions to old and new and yet undiscovered problems. He has been in sales and brand management with companies like Madhura Coats, Hindustan Lever and Jagajit Industries. He has set up, fostered, nurtured and grown advertising agencies for many years from strategy planning to creative directorship to management stewardship. His experience has been varied and extensive. In his capacity as marketing strategist and communication specialist, Shanta Kumar has worked on fast-moving consumer goods like soaps, detergents, toiletries, foodstuffs, cosmetics, liquor, alcoholic beverages, tea, coffee, tobacco, durables like television, home appliances, audio equipment, automobiles, financial services, mutual funds, insurance, telecom, travel, tourism, petroleum products, indeed the entire range of the Indian economy. His involvement in marketing and brand strategy has resulted in the creation and growth of some significant brands in India including Hyundai, Corporate and Car Brands. The resurgence of TVS Motorcycle Company is a significant player and the creation of Bharat Petroleum Advanced Fuels and the launch of various consumer products for P&G and Tata Tea among others. He retired as the chairman of Saatchi and Saatchi India in 2008 and was an advisor to the worldwide Saatchi and Saatchi Network till 2010. He is a Bachelor of Science majoring in Physics from Loyola College, Madras University and he has a Master's in Business Administration from XLRI, Jamshedpur. He has also been involved with theatre, acting, producing plays and has sung in musicals. He conceived Malbudi Days as a television serial, helped produce it and was his primary creative consultant for the first two seasons when he was also supervised the screenplay for each of the episodes. He has performed a minor role in Bollywood, movie and a Tamil one. Shantakumar also offers his services as a certified personal executive coach. After many years of being in Mumbai, Shantakumar fulfilled his ambition of making Goa his home, a place he has been visiting since 1971. Ladies and gentlemen, I have great pleasure in welcoming Mr. B. Shantakumar. something which might be a little esoteric but to me I believe is grounded in reality and is extremely important. It may be the most important thing that we think about. I count myself a marketing man and a 
brand of person. As you've heard, I've been involved in that field for many years. It's been now 51 years since I started working. And so I have seen India change, I've seen businesses change, I've seen brands alter, I've seen things that I didn't know could happen, happen. I moved to Goa in 1971, uh, sorry, in 2011, primarily because I felt I needed a place to reconstruct my own life. And I felt that Goa was the best place to do that. I count myself a volunteer right now. I wish I knew how to speak Konkani. Unfortunately, my facility with languages is extremely poor. So, my perspectives today are going to be, you know, influenced by the world of the world of brands. Now, when you hear the word brand, I think you all think of a logo, a symbol, some advertising. Actually, brands are none of those things. Brands are actually a mental and emotional construct in your mind. It's how you have a relationship with something that is of meaning to you. That's how it becomes a brand. Otherwise, it's just a label. If something is of meaning to you, it becomes a brand for you. The persons who create brands are not the people who make them. The persons who create brands are the people who buy them and the people who use them. It's very important to understand that. And in today's digital world, this has become completely true. Marketeers and advertisers and manufacturers have actually no power. The power is transferred to consumers and they decide when they will buy, who they will buy, how much they will buy, how much they will consume. And they do that by having conversations with other consumers and decide whether something is good for them or not. I don't know how many of you, during the COVID times, all of us became doctors. Our dear friend, hallowed be his name, Google, offered us innumerable advice. How to avoid it, how to protect ourselves from it, what to do. And our conversations were illuminated by information that we never had before. In a, in a sense, that's also the world of brands. We can go to Google and find out immediately what, which is what, why is happening, go to WebMD and decide what's wrong with us. We can find the customers telling us whether a car is good or a car is bad. All of that is true. So, a brand is a mental and emotional construct in your mind which you have a relationship with. Brands evolve and brands evoke memories and experiences. To me, Goa is a brand. Another way to think about the brand, maybe a bigger way to think about the brand, is as an organizing idea. It collects all the things around us and puts it into a construct that we can all say, ah, that's what it is. It identifies, we're able to sort of decode it for ourselves. Who does the brand serve? What does it do? How does it reward the user emotionally? The bigger brands, however, go beyond this. They actually become inspirational ideas. They inspire you to be better, not just to buy them. And you'll find examples of this everywhere in the world. To me again, I want to sort of propose today that I would like to think of Goa as becoming an inspirational brand, an inspirational idea. This is the idea called Goa. Think of it not as a state but as an idea. It exists in the hearts of people, in the minds of people. It's not just physical geography. Right? So, the incomparable Ed G. Wells, which some of you may have read in school, he was a science fiction author of the 20th and maybe late 19th century, I'm not entirely sure when he started writing once said, nothing is as powerful as an idea whose time has come. Nothing is as powerful as an idea whose time has come. I believe the idea of Goa's time has come. 
It needs to be powerful and we need to create it. Not by looking towards the past, but by gazing towards the future and, and do that with innovation and boldness and courage. I first visited Goa over 50 years ago. At the time, to the outsider, Goa was a lotus eater's paradise. That's all we came here for. In this polite company, I'm not going to tell you all the things that lotus eaters did, but that's what we came for. I was a young man, and I did what most young men and young people do. And for many years, I did not think of this as very different from the thousands of pleasure seekers who come here to this, the shores of this estate. To the locals, this was about income from hospitality and services. And as long as no one interfered in their lives, it was live and let live. And so a lot of people liked that and they came for that too. It sometimes was taken to excesses. But somehow Goa pro prospered even within that. But it remained stuck in that idiom. And even to this day, from 1971 to 2022, I still not hear people talking about Goa like a lotus eater's paradise. We need to change this. This is not sustainable. It was not until a dozen or so years ago when I moved here permanently that I began to see Goa very, very differently. Why I ask myself, are young people, and to me, I must tell you, all of you are quite young to me, except maybe Ralph, right over there. Um, moved here for what reason? Why did they come here? They didn't come to, I'm not talking about the people who came to visit on holidays. These are people who came to live here. Why did they come here? Remember the earlier visitors were pleasure seekers? These visitors, these settlers, but different. They were serious young women and men, serious young women and men, who came to pursue their vocations, their calling, and to be productive. They came for that reason, not to just idle their hours away. True, it was a side benefit that they could also sun and surf. These people belonged to various professions and callings. They were cutting edge product designers, high end financial and data analysts, fine artists, professional musicians, experts in the field of wellness, yoga, and physical well being, commercial artists like book designers, typographers, and graphic designers, culinary specialists, awarded chefs, photographers, and filmmakers, to count just a short list. Not to mention real award winning authors like Amitabh Ghosh and Kiran Desai, who are homes here. My friend, Shantanu Shirde, who was the doyen of fashion photography in India for many, many years, and people count him to be their mentor, started a school of photography here. He's extremely proud of it, as, as am I. Tarun Tejpal, a name that many people do not mention in polite company, before the incident, created a Think Festival here. The luminaries who came to speak in that festival would have put dead, etc. to shame. Unbelievable array of people. They all came here. Right? With nothing more than an invitation. Goa can bring those kind of people here on a much more regular basis. Mr. Veer Glass, the world, the famous comedian and actor, has a home here. And even the company that I advise, 91 Springboard, consciously moved its head office to Goa. Which is why I advise them. Otherwise, if they would be in Bombay, I probably wouldn't be advising them. The question was, why? Why did they come? I answered many questions. Quality of life. Cost of living. Clean air. Verdant green surroundings. Ah, I know. Goa in the rains is... Goa in the rains is actually unbelievably beautiful as we all know, in spite of the floods in Pato Plaza. And this other answer that I got, we have time for our friends and for ourselves over here. 
My own answer was, why I moved here was, I said, Goa is the only place in India where I can live in a village and still have access to the best things a city can give. There is no other place like this in India. That's why I live here. Actually, all of these answers are right. But they all miss the one key quality which can inform our discussion today. Because of all the reasons and I heard and enumerated much more and more, Goa is a place where you can think. You can think away. You can think creatively. You can think deeply. And you can think meaningfully. And you ask people, they will tell you this. Busy executives will tell you this. Doctors will tell you this. A lot of people will tell you this. So here's where my idea of Goa comes from. Think of it as an inspirational dream. It's a dream. It's a context I want to provide. And I hope that during this conversation, I do not uh, you know, upset any apple carts or offend any sacred cups. Any idea that is powerful has to be economically and culturally transformational. I want to make it clear that I'm not defining culture from a political or social perspective, but as a means to be proud and potent citizens while retaining our tradition and rituals. It must be able to be economically powerful as well. This idea must benefit everyone. This is not a classist idea, it's not an elitist idea. It must work for the ordinary person. It must work for the state as a whole. And it must benefit the country. And it must inspire the world. Sounds like an probably impossible dream, right? Third, it must be a sustainable one. By this, I mean it must be future-proof. It must be 21st century ready. We are end, nearing the end of the first quarter of the 21st century. We're going to be in the second quarter of the 21st century, just a few years from now. Are we ready for it? Four, it must not just be impossible to implement, but plausible to execute to. Lastly, it should be unique. So when you keep this here, this idea, which I still haven't told you about, I know it's like I've talked a lot about this, but without telling you anything, keep these five touchstone points in your mind. I will not have the time or even the intellectual bandwidth to list all the facets of execution, but I will try and touch upon them. If at the end of this talk, any of you, all of you, feel there's something we are inspired by, I personally, offer my services to be part of those discussions with anybody who's interested. Maybe this can happen on the ages of the GCCI. So without further ado, here is the idea called Goa. Goa is the global hub for creative sciences and creative arts. Goa is the global hub for creative sciences and creative arts. Creative sciences are those that search for applications and discoveries that can benefit people. Artificial intelligence, nanotechnology, nanobots powered by AI that are used in microsurgeries, for example. Stem cell research and applications, genetic splicing and applications, brain mapping, advanced prosthetics, wearable tech, solar energy coatings, drone mapping for agriculture, robotics, telemedicine, list is endless. These are creative sciences. Creative arts lives in design, product design, building design, living spaces empowered by better products, photography, advanced 3D animation, 3D printing, architecture, holography, language research as a play, AI so we can all understand one another. Dance, musicology, graphic design, and of course painting, sculpture, the list goes on. It is no accident that Einstein was also a very, very accomplished violinist. Art inspires the mind. Science uses that inspiration. You cannot have one without me. So when you look at this list, you may be scratching your head and asking a few questions. What is a 
We're not even the ballpark about all of this. This does seem like a wish list which either utopian or delusional or both. What do you mean by the global hub? What is this? Who, who gets this done? What's the economic benefit? What's the social benefit? Have others attempted stuff like this? So I'm going to start with the last question first. The beginning of this millennium, maybe slightly before even, Singapore came to a data-driven conclusion. They discovered that the quantum of foreign investment in a state or a country was directly proportional to what they call the coach cultural coefficient of that country. So what do they do? They embark on a very ambitious program that just did that. It is no accident that Singapore created the Formula One night racing in Singapore. They could use the streets to the day they said the streets are free at night to use it. It's not, it's not done by accident. Singapore does very little by accident instead. It was no accident that they created a large opera house. It was no accident that they built a large casino. It was no accident that they improved their gardens and walkways. It was no accident that they continued to improve on the already impressive Changi Airport. What happened? They did much more than this office. I'm just listening to things. The expatriates came flooding in, bringing their dollar power, and investment came in. PNG moved this entire Asia Pacific headquarters to Singapore in one school. Everybody moved to Singapore. They only left the field offices in the respective countries. Of course, like PNG does something today, everybody follows and others follow. And of course, Singapore, in Singapore, offered huge tax relief for these people. Am I saying this is what we should do? No. Because unlike Singapore, we already have a very healthy health culture coefficient. Singapore is an artificial city-state. We needed to build that. We already have it. We can improve on it, for sure. But to have that and not to use it seems somewhat of a waste. We have a landscape blessed by seasons, blessed by beaches, blessed by mountains, and blessed by villages which are strewn like pearls across the landscape. 